Ladies and gentlemen, today is March 12th, 2015. And this is The King and Kale Show, episode 213, where normally we learn to be better artists, but on Thursdays we like to meditate. It's time for another Thoughtful Thursday, yeah! And today what we're going to be talking about is black and white thinking. Now what could that possibly mean? What could that possibly mean? We're going to get into that in just a moment, but first I have an announcement to make. A lot of you have been wondering about this class that I have been teasing, right? A class where I will teach you one-on-one -on -one how to make your very own web comics, and that time is now because I have basically joined up or partnered with Skillshare to bring you guys some one-on-one -on -one lessons about creating your own web comic characters, and you can go there and learn, post things, create your own projects, and get one-on-one -on -one feedback from me and your fellow students and have a great time. For example, basically this is what I'm gonna be walking you through, making faces, creating bodies, and all that good stuff. And you can sign up by clicking the little link on YouTube down in the description. Come join me and let's get some one-on-one -on -one time together. All right, that's enough of that. It's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into this topic for today and that is black and white thinking. All right, so this was actually brought up to me. Recently, I've enrolled in an online mentorship class with a man known as Ty Lopez, who some of you may have seen on the TED Talk where he talks about reading a book a day. And at first I was like, whoa, like a book a day? Like, you seriously like take one of these things? I'm like, how do you, how do, you do that in a day? It's like, it just blew me away. So I was like, okay, well, I gotta know about what this guy's doing. I gotta know what his technique is. And I found out his technique and I enrolled in his 67 steps program. And it's really, really awesome. And there was one day, or one day he had this video where he was talking about black and white thinking. And it really caught me off guard because I realized how much I was actually having this be a part of my own life and how much I needed to kind of kick it out. So let's go ahead and get into it. What, what is black and white thinking? Black and white thinking is basically, say you're a person, right? And throughout your life, you will always be faced with, you gotta be on this side or you gotta be on this side, right? You, you either gotta be over here or over here. And there's no like in the middle, like your convictions and like the size, like this can be political, this can be between like veganism and uh, Atkins diet people that eat only meat and vegetables. You know, it's like, there's so many different things where you feel like you have to land in a certain group. You feel like you must land in a certain group in order to belong. You know, and it's naturally ingrained in us because, you know, like 50, you know, thousand years ago, you know, back when like the cavemen were alive or probably not that long, but you know, like 5,000 years ago, when it was just cavemen, we were ingrained with all of these mental habits of that we will survive longer if we are in a group, if we are in a group with people that think like us and uh, are able to basically be part of our tribe. And that mentality has stuck with us over the years to the point where nowadays we no longer truly ask ourselves about like what is right and wrong what what is like are there things about this that are right in certain parts of my life or certain circumstances where the beliefs of you know this group can be um you know applicable to what's going on in your life and is there times where it could be bad you know and uh without getting too political like polit policies and like uh, political stuff is really where a lot of this stuff comes into a play but also i want to ask you guys to to really take a closer look. And I'll give you an example of where I kind of had this realization. And that is that I felt like I had to be a good person, right? I wanna be a good person. So in order to do that, in order to be a good person and to be a successful person, somebody who is on top of their game and makes no mistakes, right? I need to get up at this exact time, right? And I wanna be in shape, right? So I gotta work out at this time. And then I want to do good at my job. So I work from this time to this time, eight hours, right? Eight hours. And then after that, you know, I'll, you know, make food and just so I can be healthy, right? Again, it's like, there's so many things that are happening. And I feel like the problem with this thinking is that like, I have to do it this way. Otherwise it doesn't work at all. Right. Or I have to do this or I'm not going to be happy. Like another great example is I felt like I, unless I was working on Emma completely and like kicking out all of my other side projects, I felt like I could never be happy again. Because I remember when I first quit my job, uh, back when I was working at Riot, I'm working for them again, but now I'm working from home. Back when I was in the office and I quit to work on Emma, I remember I'd wake up in the morning and my brain was just so charged and just ready to go. And I just felt such a sense of fulfillment that I never had before. And 
And then like slowly but surely as I stopped working on the comic and started like going to other things, you know, um, I started to feel like my happiness was draining. So naturally my conclusion was I must work on the comic, otherwise I'm not gonna be happy. But you know what's really interesting? As soon as I kicked that thought out, and of course I'm not gonna stop the comic, but you know what I mean. As soon as I kicked that thought out and I asked myself, was it really the comic that made me happy? Or was it the fact that I was really enjoying my work? Was it that I was enjoying and getting fulfillment out of my work because I allowed myself to enjoy it instead of feeling like it either had to be this or this, you know, either this or I'm unhappy. And, um, and then another thing that really kind of hit me hard was I probably, probably one of my biggest challenges just going through life is getting proper sleep because, you know, I'm a man, I'm living out on my own and I have my, my parents don't tell me when to go to bed anymore. You know, not even my boss tells me when to go to bed anymore. So I can stay up till 6 a.m. in the morning and I can just work and play video games. And I can do whatever the heck I want. But I felt like if I didn't get up, you know, but I always wanted to get up early. I wanted to get up at like 6 a.m., right? And like meditate and watch the sun come up and, and like make a bowl of oatmeal. And I felt like if I didn't do those things, if I wasn't progressing towards those things, then I wasn't a good person, that I wasn't gonna make it. I wasn't gonna make it in my life and uh, my life wasn't gonna be happy. But then one day I decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna kick that black and white thinking out. And I'm gonna say, no, you know what? I'm gonna wake up whenever the heck I want. I'm gonna wake up at 11 o'clock. You know, I'm gonna wake up at noon. And instead, I'm just gonna take this, you know, the routine that I would do at six in the morning, where meditating, jumping around, dancing around. I got this workout routine where I literally just put on music and I'll like, I'll like jump around, like I'm jumping on my bed. You guys know I'm crazy. I'll like chuck pillows around and, and uh, I have like a pull-up bar over there, you know, like one of those door gym things. So I'll do like light workouts. And um, I just do that no matter what time I wake up. Because the problem that I fell into was that if I woke up late, I would always tell myself, ah, oh, the day's already halfway gone or the day's ruined. And you know, there's no point. There's no point in like doing this thing. Or, you know, how often have you done this to yourself saying like, oh, well, I want to do this art project or I want to do this picture, but uh, I don't know if I was, I was really feeling that pose and you just kind of give up. You just kind of give up and you're like, oh, I don't really know how to do that. So maybe I should just not even try, you know, that's black and white thinking. It's like, no, you should figure out, you should go as far as you can go, like get as much of that experience out of whatever it is you're creating as possible. And if for some reason you know that you have to learn something, then go out there and freaking learn it. There's books on every single subject that you could ever hope to find. And you have the magic of Google. You can basically find any image that you want and get reference. So I want to urge you guys that if you are feeling, okay, another great black and white thought is this. I used to think that school was bad, right? College is bad. And that um, it's like a trick, especially for artists. Like you shouldn't be going to college. You should just be learning by yourself. You should be self-teaching yourself. And, you know, cause that's what I did. And I was like, all these, you know, you're paying for student loans and doing all this, you know, and that might be true. There might be an element of truth to that. But regardless, it's like, no, the point is, is that different things work for different people. Right? Different things work for different people. What you have to do, and this is something, this is really what I, what I want to drive home here, is that I was building my life off of philosophies and techniques that other people were teaching me, people that I look up to, motivational speakers like Jim Rohn and Les Brown and uh, even Ty Lopez now. But now what I've told myself is that whenever I get a technique or some sort of philosophy that I say, oh, you know what? I want to integrate that into a part of my life. I now ask myself, okay, that is what worked for them. How can I take that, take that, and the final result is, right, success, happiness, wealth, love, all of those things. What is that thing that I'm trying to get to? And how can I take that and blend it into my life, right? Because, you know, people write these books about getting up at four o'clock in the morning and meditating and watching the sun come up. It's like, that works for them. I need to find something, like, what is it that they're actually getting out of that? And how do I make that work for me? Okay, no more of this, I have to do it this way or it doesn't work, or I have to do it this way or it doesn't work. You know, and just, again, I, I want you to understand that everybody is different. So that way, when you meet somebody, this really comes in handy because then when you meet somebody who has a different belief than you, you just understand that, oh, well, just because they think that doesn't mean it, it's wrong. It just works for them. What I need to focus on is what's working for me, right? What I, my reasons, my reasons and what, I, what I'm trying to get to. All right. So I did say the word integrate, and that's the second thing that I want to get into. That's what I want to touch on. And there might be a, a whole nother daily that we can talk about this, but 
basically let's talk about integration because this is the other thing i usually like to do this thing where it's like a new new year right new year new word last year my word was abundance i always thought about abundance i gotta have abundance of everything abundance of like you open up my shelves and like there's all like it's just like a bunch of cans of beans and stuff but it's like abundance right abundance of food right bananas peanut butter spaghetti spaghetti sauce you know a bunch of stuff that that i can just open my you know cupboard or whatever and there's just a lot of stuff there it just makes me feel very nice to have abundance of a lot of things and so i wanted to pursue that right uh, but this year, the magic word is integrate. And again, this is another thing that I got from Ty Lopez. I'll put a link to his talk down in the, uh, not about integration, but just one of his talks so you can check it out on YouTube as well. Um, and this has to do with the fact of, it also ties into black and white thinking. And that is, um, he talks about integration and learning to love your life as a grind. Learning to love your work and love your life and put them together. And then what do you have? You have the grind of life. A lot of people say this. It's like, oh man, oh, I gotta get up and go to this job that I hate, you know? And it's like, oh, I feel like all I'm doing is I'm just like making this money so that way on the weekend I can go out and just distract myself long enough, get a little, you know, a little bit of a release of a chemical of happiness, and then go back to work and then hate my life again for the, the rest of the week, you know? And what he's talking about with integration is he's talking about what are the things that you really wanna do with your life? What are the things that you want to do? What do you want to, where do you want to go? What do you want to bring to the world? And he's asking you to think of ways that you can integrate that into what you're currently doing now. Like say you want to be a professional tennis player, right? This is just an example. Okay, but you're working at Nordstrom selling shoes. It's like, well, why aren't you at least working at a sports shop that sells tennis equipment, right? So that way you can get excited about you know, the actual product that you're selling and you'll be, be a better salesman because when you're passionate about what the thing it is that you're doing, then you'll naturally be able to sell it more. And um, so for artists, I wanna challenge you that if you're working at, uh, at, at freaking Starbucks, right? It's like, how can you integrate art into that? Or where can you, like, is there a place where you can fit art into Starbucks, you know? I mean, there's tons of people that you're meeting there that are probably sketching in their sketchbooks. You might be able to meet somebody or maybe you could like draw on people's cups. I don't know, like draw a funny picture, you know, like bring value to whatever it is that you're doing. Find a way to love your job in the pursuit of where you're going, because I got news for you. Your life is going to be the grind. Even the people that win the lottery and never have to work another day in their life, you know, pretty soon they're out freaking mowing the grass because they like once your grind is taken away from you, once your work and purpose is taken away from you, you become very like freaked out because you've lived your whole life under this thought of, I need to be doing something. I need to be grinding. I need to be moving. I need to be progressing. And when's that, when that gets taken away from you, your purpose is taken away. So I want to urge you guys to think of ways that you can integrate all the things that you love about life into your grind and learn to love the grind. And this is another thing that we could talk about a whole nother day, but I did want to just leave that here for you. So get, get your mind rolling, get your mind rolling. Think about, think about ways to do multiple things at once. I think that's what it's all about, doing multiple things at once. And loving it, loving it the whole way through. All right guys, so we're gonna end today's show. Thank you guys for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Don't forget, if you guys wanna go over to Skillshare, join me and do some cool classes, learn to create your own characters, and get some one-on-one -on -one feedback from me, then make sure you click that little link down there. So yeah, you guys take care of yourselves. Until next time, see ya.